A Russian captive in Ukraine said that North Korean soldiers opened fire on their troops in the Kursk region. A fragment of the interrogation was published on his Telegram channel by Ukrainian journalist Denis Kazansky. The occupier says that his unit was based near the Russian village of Glushkovo. Everything was fine with them until the Koreans were brought in. You can't talk to them. They started shooting at us, maybe in panic, because they mistook us for the enemy. Russians all looked the same to them. Slavs. During the assault, the Koreans started firing at us, the unnamed Russian soldier said. We tried to explain to them where to aim, but I think they shot two of our own. I decided it was better to surrender in this situation than to be killed by our own bullet, the soldier added. He is hoping that friendly fire wasn't so friendly after all, he added. According to the captor, the Russian military command does not respond to complaints. In addition, it is easier for them to send Russian soldiers, not North Koreans, to storm the area. There will be a scandal if they die. I am not delighted with such allies, he added. Andriy Kovalenko, the head of the Counter-Disinformation Department of Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council, said on Monday that the first North Korean troops in Kursk have come under fire, days after NATO and the U.S. confirmed their presence. Geopolitical analyst Viktor Kovalenko, a Ukrainian military veteran, told Newsweek that Putin is turning to North Korean troops not as a tool of winning the war, but as a tool for solving urgent policy issues and propaganda. He's also buying time to postpone general mobilization in Russia or wait until the negotiation of a peace agreement pending the outcome of the U.S. presidential elections. Kovalenko said Pyongyang will get money food and space technology from Russia in return for their contribution to Putin's war effort, the Korea Herald newspaper reported on Sunday. It cited Wee Sung Lak, a South Korean lawmaker, it said, had been briefed by the country's National Intelligence Service, NIS. North Korean soldiers will also get $2,000 per month salary, making a price tag of around $240 million a year if 10,000 soldiers are deployed. He said, Russia plans to form at least five 2,000 to 3,000 strong units manned by North Korean troops integrated into formations with ethnic minorities from Russia's Far East regions to conceal their presence. Sergei Kislitsia, Ukrainian ambassador to the UN, has said. Ukraine is as close as possible to receiving a missile capable of hitting Moscow and posing a personal threat to President Vladimir Putin. According to the Telegraph, Ukrainian forces are preparing to deploy a powerful RIM-2 ballistic missile. The head of the Ukrainian delegation to NATO, Yegor Chernev, confirmed that the weapon is almost fully operational. Believe me, there will soon be concrete results that not only Ukraine but also the Russian Federation will see, Chernev said. RIM-2 is a single-stage solid-fuel missile capable of carrying a 500-kilogram warhead of up to 500 kilometers. It significantly outperforms the 1970s Tochka missile, which was previously the best weapon of its type in Ukraine. The development of the RIM-2 has been ongoing for more than a decade, but the project only gained priority after the conflict widened in 2022. Amid Russian attacks on industrial facilities in Dnipro, Ukrainian specialists completed the first prototypes of the RIM-2, and in August, President Zelensky announced a successful test. The Ukrainian army will be able to carry out deep strikes that do not require approval from allies such as the United States, Britain and France, which have supplied precision-guided munitions but limited their use against targets inside Russia. As a result, Ukraine has typically responded to Russian shelling with far fewer munitions, primarily drones. With the RIM-2, restrictions on long-range strikes are effectively lifted. The only obstacle will be the speed of production of new missiles. With the RIM-2 in use, Ukrainian forces are expected to be able to more actively attack targets inside Russia, although this is unlikely to have an immediate impact on the situation on the front, where the main problem for Ukraine remains the lack of trained soldiers. Blowing up a Russian airfield, factory or oil refinery can suppress Russian air raids, gradually throttle the supply of heavy weaponry to Russian forces and squeeze the wider Russian economy. Russian President Vladimir Putin might even face the prospect of strikes aimed at him personally 
in retaliation for Russia's many attempts to eliminate Zelensky. But the Hrim too can't prevent Russian regiments from overrunning outnumbered and outgunned Ukrainian garrisons in cities and towns along the front line. As the wider war's fourth year looms, Russia has an enduring manpower advantage despite registering staggering battlefield losses that recently have averaged around 1,500 killed and wounded troops per day. Ukrainian losses are much lower, but in strategic terms, it hardly matters. Russia is an autocracy with a population of more than 140 million. In control of the media and immune from political opposition, the Kremlin faces scant few constraints on its ability to generate fresh troops. It has consistently managed to sign up 30,000 recruits a month, nearly enough to make good, record-high recent losses. Deputy Chief of the Main Directorate of Doctrines and Training of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Colonel Yevgeny Mezevikin, said that the Russian and Ukrainian armies have significant differences. The defender himself is a career tanker, hero of Ukraine, people's hero, full cavalier of the order of Bodan Kamelnitsky, commander of the tactical group Adam, and has been fighting since 2014. There is no autocracy dictatorship like theirs. People have free access to information, can express their opinion, protest in any form, even in the army. We are active in social networks. This is not always good. This opinion will not always be constructive, useful. Our enemies can use it, but the servicemen will not get anything special for this. When they use the forces and means that are in a military unit or in a group of troops in a complex, we see that they launch equipment, launch their disposable rashists from it. Someone will get there. Someone will walk. We do not have this, he told Radio Charter. The military man added that Ukraine cannot morally afford such an approach. Moreover, even if some commander had such an idea, he would not be able to do it because society would not forgive him. The Russians know that they will raise the salary of the soldier, give him a bonus, set the term of service, but they will not say that almost everyone who comes here dies. They are constantly recruiting people not to increase the army, but to plug the holes because they die like cockroaches. After treatment, the Russian soldier thinks that in a year he will come home as a hero with a medal earn a ton of money and everything will be okay. Only a few know what will really happen. Maybe neighbors and relatives quietly said, but they have no access to the media. And in order to get some money, they will remain silent, even if they have to wait, Mezevikin concluded. As military political observer Alexander Kovalenko pointed out, in October, the Russian army set an absolute record for personnel losses, 41,980. Overall, as Kovalenko noted, the losses of Russian personnel this year are the highest and by the end of December will exceed the total losses of the occupiers in 2022 and 2023. He recalled that the occupiers' losses in 2022 amounted to 92,920 personnel. In 2023, already 253,290 people, and in the incomplete 2024, already 336,400.